Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, I will be reading from the r slash entitled people subreddit. So let's jump into it. D-Bag's Mistress and the Wedding, part one. This is a throwaway account for obvious reasons. I shared this story a few years ago on a similarly themed Facebook group. Started slash gave up writing a book and now I'm sharing it here, mildly edited, for your pleasure. It is long, it is true, and it was triggered by a post about parading infidelity at a wedding. A few things to note before we get started. This whole thing started a long time ago, literally spanning decades. I debated changing the names and making it a best-selling novel, but I'm just not that dedicated. If you see this post, grab some chocolate, a nice glass of something, and depending on your own life experience, a issue or two as we begin the journey. Part one of five, background. Meet quote unquote douchebag, an old and dear friend of my husband who cheated on his wife, put on a bit of a naked sex show at a camping event, and still somehow ended up in my wedding party. Even after his plans to burn me in effigy at the bachelor party were foiled. He's a special one. Back in the ancient days of the early 1990s, when I first started seeing the man who would become my husband, one of his his best friends was a lying, cheating douchebag, henceforth known as D-Bag. D-Bag was the first in their circle of friends to get married and have children, but he still went by himself with friend circle to an annual week-long camping party event where he would indulge in extramarital sexual adventures. His friend circle politely ignored his outrageous behavior because he had told everyone and insisted that he had an open marriage. His wife would stay home and take care of their young children, which seemed odd because the camping thing was very inclusive of children and wives and girlfriends. But being male, none of them thought to question him about it under the none of our business, right? Theory of friendship. This behavior had gone on for several years before I came around and was accepted as normal by the friend circle. I was the first girlfriend to be included in the camping event and things started started out a bit rocky for me and D-Bag. He ended up yelling at me when his conquest du jour overheard me discussing his questionable marital status with hubby and his side piece promptly dumped him because of his lack of full disclosure of his marital status prior to their recreational activities. I mentioned that he is a lying D-Bag, right? Functional adults will be shocked to learn that D-Bag's wife did not know that they had a quote-unquote open marriage. Specifically, D-Bag's wife did not know he was banging other women at the campground while she was six months pregnant with their third child and at home watching their other two. How did we find out D-Bag had been lying to everyone about his quote-unquote open marriage, you ask? D-Bag's wife confronted me on our return in front of everyone to ask about her husband's behavior on the trip. Since I knew she was pregnant and he had been having unprotected sex, yes, ick that I knew this, but we were all camping in tents close to each other. Between hearing things I didn't want to hear, accidentally seeing naked people, and him flat out stating he didn't need to use condoms because the drunk chick he picked up didn't seem like the type of person to have STDs, I knew more than I wanted so I answered her truthfully. All I have to say is, if I were you, I wouldn't let him near me without wearing a condom. My first answer to her had been, shouldn't you be asking him that? And she had said, in front of everyone, I'm asking you, because I know you'll tell me the truth. She was right. She was pregnant. He was an idiot. And her kid didn't need to have STD issues because daddy liked it better without protection. It was a tough call. And some may not agree with it, but I stand by it. 
Besides, open marriage, right? She apparently knew he was with other women, but did she know it was unprotected? Ha, well, the open marriage liar was caught out in front of everyone when his wife went ballistic and said many, many, many things, all of which made it clear that his open marriage existed only in his mind. To say I wasn't D-Bag's favorite person after that would be an understatement. He and his wife were apparently able to patch things up and recover from the debacle. Ugh, and D-Bag was still someone who was important to my boyfriend slash fiance slash husband ugh so he and i were polite when the regular social events of friend circle required it a few years later he did end up being a groomsman in our wedding and caused some problems with his plans for the bachelor party which should entertain the drama llamas here d-bag wanted to burn me in effigy as part of the bachelor party celebration one of the other groomsmen was told became properly horrified called hubby and that was one of our wedding fights both of my brothers were invited to that bachelor party and i would like to think they would have been offended on my behalf but either way i put my foot down and announced if it happened d-bag was out Hubby was still, if D-Bag isn't in the wedding, then there will be no wedding. While I was all, if D-Bag pulls that stunt and you are sticking by him, damn right there will be no wedding. But it didn't happen and our wedding did. Water under the bridge, right? Lest you think I was special in D-Bag's eyes, he later almost derailed another wedding when he wanted a funeral theme for another bachelor party, complete with casket. And the bride was horrified and obviously offended by the insult. Who knew? I roll. Thankfully, the relationship between my husband and his old friend began a natural course of drifting apart. Time passes, and then part two of five, D-Bag finds a new girlfriend. The married father of three finds a new soulmate in Ho-Bag, H-Bag, and he wants all of his friends to welcome her into the tight-knit friend circle while his unsuspecting wife stays home watching their brood. Chaos and drama split the friend circle as people respond in varying ways, with one couple in particular deciding they like H-Bag better than D-Bag's wife and conspire to provide cover for the new love affair to blossom. Miserable marriages don't fix themselves, and D-Bag and his wife were in one. He knew it, but apparently she didn't. Somehow, D-Bag found a new girlfriend, and apparently this helped him not be a total jerk at home. And his wife, who obviously didn't know about H-Bag, truly seemed to believe the things they were doing to strengthen their marriage were working. I was not her friend, but there were occasional conversations, and she would periodically check in with me over the years, always with profuse thanks for my candor during that rough time. So, you may ask, how did I know about H-Bag when his wife didn't? He started bringing her around our friend circle and introducing her as his girlfriend. This time, he didn't try to feed anyone the open marriage lie. He just casually expected his friends to entertain her because, hell, I have no idea why he thought they would go along with it, but the bastard doll did. This particular friend circle was a bunch of gamer guys who were gradually bringing women into their lives. One of the odd things about this gaggle was not a single one of them had any sisters. So maybe that was why they were so challenged when it came to decent behavior about women and relationships. Honestly, I don't care. D-Bag was very careful not to bring H-Bag around when I was there, and I truly didn't know she existed for quite a while, but he blew it when he tried to introduce H-Bag to my hubby, who told me later he was in shock slash didn't know what to do, left a little earlier than expected with a polite excuse, and came home to discuss it with me. How do you handle when someone you care about wants you to welcome his new secret girlfriend? 
end. This was the last straw. I wanted Daybag cut out of our lives. But Hubby had loyalty to him and didn't want to do that. They were brothers by choice, not blood. Hubby and I had some major fights about it. Because to me, this was all kinds of wrong. Hubby talked to Daybag and found out that one, she was comfortable with him being married and had no concern about his kids. Two, Daybag didn't necessarily want to divorce, custody issues, and childcare were thoughts. Plus, I think he did care about his wife at least a little. Three, Daybag had no plans on ever revealing his secret girlfriend to his wife. And four, Daybag genuinely wanted his friend circle to get to know H-Bag because he thought she was just awesome. Like I said, Hubby and I had some major fights about this. There was no way H-Bag was coming to my home and I wasn't going to socialize with either of them while they were together. This was a compromise. I would be civil if it was just D-Bag. But if he brought H-Bag anywhere, Hubby and I would leave. And that meant Hubby was leaving too. The situation wasn't ideal in any fashion. But D-Bag had managed to involve the rest of us in his marital drama. And now it was causing problems everywhere. As everyone ended up being forced to take some kind of side in the situation. Lest decades long friendships be shattered. Personally, I was ready to go thermal nuclear on the whole lot of them. But to be fair, they had been Hubby's friends before we were together. So I didn't have the same history. I just saw them as kind of being scum. And since I had thought better of them, it was painful. Part three of five my personal stuff, an interlude, in which I express much angst over the entire situation, question whether these backstabbing assholes would do the same for my spouse, and struggle with how to handle moral questions about other people's relationships. The casualness with which H-Bag was welcomed into the friend circle was extremely upsetting to me. In several cases, members of the friend circle were actively participating and providing D-Bag with cover for his relationship with H-Bag. One couple explained they liked H-Bag better than D-Bag's wife because she was more entertaining with better social skills. Other members were shrugging their shoulders and just trying to stay out of the crossfire. Women with less group history, who obviously hadn't been to the camping sex show debacle, were confused because D-Bag's wife wasn't really around a lot. She was staying home watching the kids while he did the quote unquote gaming nights with the guys. So they just thought he was a normal single guy with a girlfriend until they had begun developing a relationship with poor H-Bag as one of the other girlfriends. I couldn't help but ask the obvious question. If the friend circle were willing to lie and welcome H-Bag for the sake of D-Bag, would they be comfortable doing the same to me and my marriage? The question offended my husband. I would never behave like this, which would bring up some issues from our past and cause more fights between us, which made me more insecure and even more hostile to the people creating this situation. Lie down with dogs, get up with fleas, I said to him. Why hang out with people who think this is acceptable if you don't agree with it? And he would remind me of how D-Bag had been a good friend for many years before all of this happened and was closer than blood as a brother by choice. Poison spreads. My stance on refusing to socialize with D-Bag and H-Bag was ridiculed by some and caused damage to other relationships. Even though I wasn't telling people who they could socialize with, I was just refusing to participate. But I was being judgmental and prudish and, oddly enough, people who were okay with marriage infidelity were not okay with me not being okay with it. To this day, I am still comfortable with the stance I took, which for me was about my own personal integrity. The situation helped me to clarify the boundaries I was comfortable with and the ones I wasn't willing to cross if I was going to be true to my own vision of myself as a decent person. The line wasn't sex because quote unquote open marriage was none of my business. The line was deception. I didn't pick up the phone and call D-Bag's wife. My rationale was she knew he had cheated on her in the past and she had stayed and I had no interest in being the messenger who was going to get shot for telling her what was going on behind her back. 
but I wasn't going to participate in normalizing this relationship. It was a horrible, horrible situation. It went on for months. And then, then the wedding happened in parts four and five. I'm going to be honest. I dislike all of these people. The fact that OP's husband remained friends with this D-bag, claims he has loyalty to a cheater, defended his friend's right to burn his future wife in effigy, and doesn't respect OP's boundaries in not wanting to be involved with a cheater, even before H-bag showed up, but claims he has loyalty to D-bag, so therefore they have to compromise so that he can stay friends with a cheater just says leaps and bounds of OP's husband's character. And the fact that OP still decided to marry him even after these huge red flags really bothers me. This entire friend circle is a bunch of assets. I'm also irritated at the fact that OP had previously told D-Bag's wife about him cheating yet couldn't do it again with H-Bag. Like, why not? I would have called her up immediately and been like, hey girl, your husband is doing it again. He has a secret girlfriend. Just thought I'd let you know. <sighs> I just... OP letting her husband dictate this friendship and letting D-Bag get away with all of this says so much about all of them. And I just do not like any of them if I'm being completely honest. I really hope there's a redemption arc in parts four and five because I'll be honest, I'm disappointed that OP would even marry someone that protects a cheater in the first place. How this story should have went is, I went to a campground and my boyfriend's friend was cheating and is disrespectful to his wife and kids, yet this friend is still important to my boyfriend and he claims he has loyalty to him. So now I'm single. The end. Like, great googly moogly. How morally wrong is everyone in this story? Sorry, I'll stop ranting now. These first three parts just royally irked me. Again, I really hope there's a redemption arc in parts four and five tomorrow. But anyways, that is all for me today. Please leave a like like and subscribe if you want. I truly appreciate when you do and I will see you tomorrow for part two slash parts four and five. Bye!